All right, in this video, we will talk about electrical power, the amount of power provided by a battery or dissipated by a resistor in a DC circuit. We'll talk about this equation and some alternate forms of this equation and go through a few example calculations. So now let's reuse some of the same examples we had in our Ohm's Law video and calculate the power dissipated by the resistor. So for example, we had a circuit with a three volt battery and a 100 ohm resistor. So the voltage is known, that is three volts. The resistance is known, that is 100 ohms. The current is unknown, that is not given in the problem statement. And now we would also like to solve for the power, which is unknown. And remember that we have three different forms of that power equation. We have P equals IV, we have P equals I squared R, and we have P equals V squared over R. And all of these are just based on the same thing. They're just substituting Ohm's law into this equation to give some slightly different forms. So the easiest thing to do here, or the least amount of work or calculation required is to find the version of the equation that has the variables we already know. So we are given the voltage and the resistance and this is a simple circuit with just a single battery and a single resistor. So we know that the voltage across the resistor is equal to the voltage across the battery. This gets more complicated as we'll see in the future as we have circuits with multiple resistors and multiple batteries where that is not always the case. But in this very simple circuit, we can just take this form of the equation because that depends on the voltage and the resistance, which are quantities that we know. So we're just going to plug our values into that equation to get our answer for the power. And when we do that, we get three volts squared divided by 100 ohms equals 0 0.09 watts or 90 milliwatts. Okay, next up, we had a nine volt battery with a current of 10 milliamps through an unknown load. So we wanted to find the resistor value that would give us this 10 milliamp current. And interestingly, with these power equations, we actually don't need to even solve for the resistor value to get the power. So we know that the voltage is nine volts, the current is 10 milliamps, and we want to solve for this unknown power. But remember, we have the power equation P equals IV. There's no resistor in there. We don't actually need to solve for the resistor value first. So you don't need to bother doing that if the problem only asks you to solve for the power and not for the resistor value. All you have to do is plug in your values. And remember, so 10 times nine, oh, be careful. What I do there, what are my units? Milliamps, so that's not a 10, it's a 10 times 10 to the negative three, or you could write that out as 0 0.01 amps times nine volts. Again, always be careful with your units. And that is also going to give us 90 milliwatts. So interesting case here, you can see we wound up with the same power dissipated in these two resistors, even though we have two circuits with two different batteries and two different amounts of current, the power winds up being the same. So for example, if we were going to talk about how much each one of these resistors is going to heat up in the case of a resistor, all of that power is dissipated as heat. Each of these is actually going to give off the same amount of heat. In our third example, we have a circuit with an unknown battery voltage, but we have a known resistance of one kilo ohm and a known current of 1.5 milliamps. So again, if you are asked to solve for the power there, write down your knowns, you don't know the voltage, you know the resistance is one kilo ohm, you know the current is 1.5 milliamps and you are asked to solve for the power. In this case, you can use the form of the equation with power, with, sorry, with resistance and current, P equals I squared R. Again, be careful with your units. That's 1.5 milliamps, so 1.5 times 10 to the negative third squared times the resistance, which is one kilo ohm, or one times 10 to the third ohms. I forgot my amps in there. And that is going to give me a power of 2.25 times 10 to the negative third watts or 2.25 milliwatts. 
And finally, let's go through one more example here. Let's say instead of having an unknown power that you're solving for, you have a target or desired power and you need to design the circuit to achieve that dissipated power. So for example, say we know we have a 12 volt battery and we want our resistor to dissipate a power of one watt. Say you're designing an electrical resistance heater or something. And we want to know what should our resistor value be to do that. So again, we know we have a set of equations and knowns and unknowns. We know our voltage is V equals 12 volts. We don't know what our current is and we don't know what our resistance is. And we also know that our power is one watt. We would like to solve for that resistance R. We can do this without actually bothering to solve for the current. If we skip straight to the version of the power equation, P equals V squared over R because that has two of the variables we need, P and V, and it has our unknown R in it. So in this case, we're going to plug in one watt equals 12 volts squared over the unknown R. And since 12 squared is 144, that's going to give us R equals 144 ohms. Now, a quick practical consideration here. Many of the common resistors you will encounter in a laboratory electronics course, you will see they are rated as one quarter watt resistors. So that is a common resistor power rating, meaning if you exceed that value, you risk burning the resistor out. So clearly in this problem here, we were asking for one watt. So that would be something more like a power resistor that is designed to dissipate more power. But these power equations, P equals IV equals I squared R equals V squared over R. When you are designing and building a real circuit, these can be useful to check to make sure you are not exceeding your resistor power rating. Again, they are not always a quarter watt. There are smaller ones that may only be a sixth or an eighth of a watt. There are larger ones that could be one watt or several watts. So you need to check what the rating is for the resistor you're actually using and then do the math to make sure that based on the current or the voltage on that resistor, you're not going to exceed that rating and burn it out. Another note here that I sort of glossed over earlier. So the power dissipated by this resistor clearly has to come from somewhere and that power is coming from the battery. So you could say that there are two different power values in this circuit, say the power of the battery and the power dissipated by the resistor. And in this case, in this simple circuit with just two components where everything is ideal and there are no other losses, for example, we're assuming that these wires are zero resistance and the battery is ideal, so there's no internal resistance to the battery, which we'll talk about in a future video, then those two quantities have to be equal due to conservation of energy. So the power generated or provided to the circuit by the battery has to be equal to the power dissipated by the resistor. Now, depending on which textbook you read or which course you're taking, you may have a sign convention assigned to these depending on how you write the energy balance. So for example, it could be that generated power is positive and dissipated power is negative. So you would write the equation like this, power generated by the battery plus power dissipated by the resistor equals zero, but this is a negative value. So when you plug in a positive number here and a negative value here, you get zero, or it could be the other way around. You might find dissipated power as positive and generated power as negative. Maybe that seems a little less intuitive to me, but I have seen textbooks that do that. So you could write it like this. These are all saying the same thing. It's just different. Sorry, that should have been a plus there where again, you plug in a negative value for the battery power. So that turns out to zero. These are all saying the same thing. It's just different sign conventions for how exactly you define generated or dissipated power. But again, point being in an ideal circuit like this with no other losses, the absolute values of these two, so maybe that's an easier way to write it, regardless of what you do with the signs, the absolute value of the battery power has to be equal to the absolute power, absolute value of the power dissipated in the resistor. As we expand to more complicated circuits, which we'll see in future videos, for example, circuits with multiple resistors and multiple batteries, then this energy balance applies to the entire circuit. This is just an easy case where we have a simple circuit with just two parts, so we know those two powers have to be equal. And again, in future videos, now we are going to start looking at these more complex circuits with multiple components.